In this hands-on exercise, we're going to see how Microsoft Graph can be used to retrieve a user's profile photo, as we've talked about up to this point. Now you can jump right to this exercise on Microsoft Learn by going to aka.ms slash graph fundamentals m3 u3. That'll get you right to the steps that I'm going to run in just a moment. Let's go ahead and dive in. So the first thing we need to do is get this application on our machine. Now we did this in module two, but we're gonna grab a fresh copy here and do it again. So we can go to the GitHub repo that's mentioned and we can either do a Git clone or we can actually just download the zip and extract it, for instance, just right to your desktop. So if we click on the code button here, I can copy this URL into my clipboard if I'm gonna do a Git clone or you can hit download zip. So you can certainly choose whichever one you would like to do. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do a git clone. So I'm gonna run off to a console here. I'm running Windows Terminal, and I'm gonna run the git clone command and paste in that URL. All right, now that just cloned it to my machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and CD into that. And then I'm gonna type code dot. You don't have to use VS Code. I'm gonna be using it for the demo coming up. But if you don't use VS Code, you could just open this MS Learn folder into whatever editor you'd like, and it would work just fine. So feel free to use your favorite editor. But let's go ahead and open VS Code for this demo. And there we go. Now you're going to see the same files that we saw previously in module two of this course. You'll notice that we have an auth.js file. That's going to be our MSAL code, which will log a user in and get the access token. We have a graph.js file that's going to make our Microsoft graph calls using the access token. Index.html is going to load our Microsoft Authentication Library script or MSAL, as well as the graph JavaScript SDK. And we also have a UI.js, and that handles just showing and hiding things and manipulating the DOM, the document object model, just using vanilla JavaScript. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up auth.js and just like we saw in the previous module, you're going to need a client ID and a directory or tenant ID. Now, if you didn't go through the exercises in module two, you'll need to do that because in one of the exercises, we do an app registration in Azure Active Directory. Now, I've already done that. And so I'm going to run off and grab my application or client ID. Let's copy that. And then we'll paste that into the appropriate spot here in the code. And then I'm also going to go ahead and grab my directory or tenant ID, which you'll see right here. And we'll do the same thing. That's going to go at the end of this URL. All right. So that's kind of the first code manipulation we need to make. So now that we have that in place and we can hook up to Azure Active Directory, let's move on to the next steps here. So next, what we're going to do is add an area into index.html. Currently, we have a welcome where we show their username after they've logged in. And we're going to add a little bit of code in here that's in the exercise to render a button they can click. That's going to call display profile photo. We'll add that into UIJS in just a moment. That will then call Microsoft Graph. That'll use the Graph.js file that we have and then get that user profile photo. Now, once that comes back, we'll hide the button and then we'll display that user profile right here and their photo will be added as the source of this image. And I'll show you how to convert a blob of data into a local URL that the browser can actually use. Now, you'll notice that on the image tag, we have a class called user. This is our CSS class, of course. And so part of the exercise steps will have you add this style for a user CSS class. Notice we're just going to add a border radius to round the picture of 50%, set the height and the width to 150 pixels, and then we're going to add a border around it, which is five pixels. And you'll see that once this image is rendered. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure that file's saved, and let's move on to the next step. Now, next, we're going to open up Graph.js, and I'm going to paste in the function that you'll see in this exercise called get user photo. Now, this is a really simple function. It's very similar to what you saw earlier in the previous module where we grab the user profile, except in this case, we're going to use the graph client object to call into the API and do me slash photo slash dollar value. And as we talked about before, 
dollar value will get us a blob for the image that we can then convert into a local URL. We're gonna be doing that in just a moment. Now this, just like getting the user profile, is gonna require user.read permission. And notice that it's asynchronous. All right, so we'll save that file and let's move on to the next step. Now the next one has most of the code. And if you remember back in index.html, when they click this new button we added called show profile photo, we're gonna call display profile photo. Well, we obviously need that. And that's gonna go in UIJS. So I'm gonna come on in and just paste that function. Now let's talk through this one. So we have display profile photo. That's gonna call in to get user photo. Of course, that's the one we just added into GraphJS. Now, if it doesn't find a photo, we're just gonna return and really nothing happens. But if it does, we're gonna take that blob and feed it into a function that's off of this URL object, url.createObjectURL. That'll convert that, as the comment says here, from a blob into a local URL that we can then assign to the image tag. Now, what we're gonna do is go find that image tag, line 25 does that, and then we're gonna set that local URL to the source of the image. So it's really no different than setting an HTTPS type of URL to an image, except in this case, it's a local URL. And if you haven't seen this before, it's a nice feature that's been in browsers for quite a while actually, that allows us to take this blob of data and convert it into something usable for the image tag. Now, the next piece is we're gonna find the show profile photo, that's the button, we're gonna hide it. And then we're gonna find our user photo again, which we already have technically up here, but we're gonna set that style to display block so that it is now visible. And we can certainly tweak this and clean it up a little bit, but everything's being broken down into really distinct steps here. Now, the final piece is you'll notice back here that when we added the button, it was display none. So even after a user signed in, they wouldn't be able to click show profile photo to get the profile photo. So we need to fix that, of course. So the last piece of code we're gonna add is gonna go in UIJS as well. And this is gonna go into display UI, which loads and you'll notice right after they sign in, it handles showing the username, hiding the sign in button, and then showing, in this case, the button to get the user profile image. Now, of course, we don't have to make them click. We're doing that to kind of break this into distinct steps. We could just call display profile photo from here if we want it. But in this case, what we're gonna do is show the button, set that style to display block, the user clicks it, that calls display profile photo, calls into Microsoft Graph, gets the photo and then renders it. So now we're done. We've now gone through all the steps to update the auth settings. We updated our call for Microsoft Graph, and then we've updated the vanilla JavaScript code here to just show and hide things in the document object model in the web page. Let's go ahead and save everything. And I'm gonna right click and say open in integrated terminal. Let me clear that to give ourselves a little more space. And I'm gonna run an NPM start here. All right, now you may, if you haven't run this before, the NPM start, you may be prompted to type Y for a local HTTP server install. Just hit Y and then enter and you'll be good to go. Now notice I can now sign in. Now I've already signed in with my developer tenant account, so I hopefully will just get right in, but if you're not able to get right in, you'll have to log in with your username and password, and then of course you'll have to give consent for that user.read permission. So I'm gonna go ahead and click sign in. I'm already signed in, so notice welcome Dan Walleen. So that was the call to slash me in Microsoft Graph. Now when we click show profile photo, this should call the UI function, get profile photo, make that call to graph, and then return that back. So let's go ahead and do that, and there we go. That is an example of going through this exercise, grabbing that photo, getting that blob of data, and then converting that into a local URL. So let's go ahead and wrap things up with a quick review of what we covered in this module.